I think the really the biggest key to doing some type of networking is consistency and committing to do it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. That way you are able to build relationships, get your name out there, and uh, that's how it makes it work. Welcome to the Main Street Marketing Podcast. I am Skip Ranke, and today I have got a very uh, exciting person with us because we're going to talk about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, and both of our hearts, because we've been doing it for a long time. Um, it's about networking. Dennis, thank you for joining our program today. Tell us a little bit about you, your business, and, and what you've been doing in the, in the networking world. Sure, sure. Thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm Dennis Richards. I own Sage Insurance Group in Pewaukee. In addition to that, I am a BNI director for six chapters in Wisconsin. Wisconsin has 45 chapters. I have six of them. So I've been with BNI as a member for about seven years and a director for about six years. Okay. Now tell let's let's define. A lot of people don't know what BNI is. Let's sure. define what BNI is. Sure. B, BNI stands for Business Networking International. Uh, it is a global networking group. Um, there's I believe 11,000 chapters worldwide. Um, being a BNI chapter is a referral marketing right. group uh, that meets on a regular basis to build relationships and strictly pass referrals. And where your business classification inside each group, you're the only one in that group. You right. lock out your competition. Right, so you don't have to worry about competing with uh, your your main competitor. Once you're in a BNI chapter, your profession category is locked out. So. Uh, gives you a chance to really build some relationships with referral partners. It's a great organization. I mean, personally, I've been involved as a member of BNI. I believe this is my 14th year sure. um, as a, as a member, and it's just it's value you build relationships, and that's it's one of the biggest things. And you get to know the other people in your group, but then you get to know other people in other groups as well. And then you have a cross network. But I, I'll tell you a little bit story about something that I had in the success story later on down the line. But um, when we talk about networking and businesses. I mean, there's there's so many businesses that simply think that it's just talking about your business and trying to trying to sell something. Um, so when someone starts to look at networking, what are some of the things that they should be focusing on when they start their journey in the networking world with talking with them about their business or learning from others? Sure. Well, the first step is to when you commit to doing it, do it. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people I, I, I equate networking to like. So a working out, going, joining a gym. A lot of people have a New Year's resolution. They join a gym, and I think the date is January 15th or something like that. That's when most people <laughs> drop their resolutions and stop working out. Right here. Um, <laughs> or they start, they start working out, and then they get sore, and then they stop doing it. Networking is very similar. Uh, if, if you're afraid of networking or you're committing to networking, you go to one meeting, and you think it didn't work, you, you stop. Yeah. Or you're scared, and that's equating to the sore muscles, and then you quit working out. Uh, the, I think the really the biggest key to doing some type of networking is consistency and committing to do it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. That way you are able to build relationships, get your name out there, and uh, that's how it makes it work. And that's really with any type of marketing. I mean, it's, it's consistency. You can't expect instantaneous returns and instantaneous results on one campaign or one thing that you do. And that's, right. that goes right along with networking because when I first joined BNI, you know, I I was really prefaced to say, look, you're not going to, this isn't going to be instantaneous, that this is going to take time and, and you have to consistently be involved with this and, you know, consistently educate people about your business, learn about other people's businesses. And that's the art. That's the beauty of uh, BNI. It's the, it's the giver's gain philosophy. I, right. If I look, look for business for you, you're, you're going to want to give business to me, but there's, there's other ways to network as well. BNI is one of the best ways to do it, Sure. but there's an art to networking. I, I firmly believe that there's an art. When you so tell me a little bit about what your if I say the art of networking what do you think what do you what do you, what do you think about when you hear the art of networking? Well, there's uh, I think a mistake that people make when they're trying to do networking is they try to sell the person that they're talking to. So uh, oh, yeah. one of the art forms for networking is you try to get the person that you're talking to talking as much about themselves as possible. Mm -hmm. um, talk about their family. Talk about um, you know, how they started in their business, their origin story, and then following up is really important as well. Yep. If, if you meet someone, make a connection, grab their business card, and never do anything with it, that's kind of a waste, waste of time. So, yeah, that kind of leads into some of the no-nos of, net, of, of networking and, and when you're doing that. Right. Um, I know I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a networking event and you get somebody who 
you know, there's there's open circles of networking and invitations and you see people that are open, you go and you, but they try to sell you on the product and say, hey, this is what I know. This is what I can do. This is what I can do. And then, then they leave. Right. They never ask you anything about you and it's it's all about them. Right. I can't tell you how many times I've had that in an event and I've never talk to them and i've never seen them again right so they're just they're far really what they're doing is they're trying to they're trying to farm it right they're not trying to plant those relationships um the other thing i've noticed as of lately is um people don't have business cards on them anymore have you noticed that i have noticed that yeah i mean i'm still a business card guy um but have you noticed that everyone's there's more electronic business cards now versus people handing them out i do yes is there is is how does that work? I mean, I mean, I know I get them onto your phone, you get the contacts, but is that is that kind of the new wave of the future of networking? Having being having the accessible of a virtual card versus the physical card. I think card? that's been more prevalent certainly in the last year. I've seen uh, like a hard business card that's a digital. You just scan it with your phone. I've seen a new thing that's a, a rubber bracelet. That's your card too. Oh, really? So they, you can take your phone and it's on your rubber bracelet, so it's not as intrusive. Um, I I. Still personally like the paper business card. I like writing a little note on the back mm-hmm. of it. So if I meet you, I can maybe make a note of what we talked about. Yeah. Uh, so when I follow up with you, I can say, hey, we talked about hunting or we talked about the Packers or whatever we talked about. Right. I'm that way too. I yeah. still like the paper card. And I know when I was at the last networking event, there was a couple people that said, hey, let me, let me, put, let me put my information on your, on your phone. I'm like, well, don't you have a card? Right. <laughs> and they're like, well, no, I don't carry cards. I'm like, yeah. well. Okay, I, I like cards, and I and I have I guess I have to open myself up to the new way of doing things and not be so <laughs> archaic. Um, right. But and I but I know you we have to adapt and we have to overcome with that. But I mean, it's I was just kind of curious as what your take on was that because I'm still a business card guy. But when we talk about when we're into the networking when we're into the networking side of things, can, is there one success story that you can think of in a networking world that has that really sticks out in your mind that that was that came from networking? Um, I have I have two. I have one uh, in a in a BNI uh, training session. Uh, we had two people that didn't know each other. They sat next to each other. One was opening up a like an ice cream store, and another one was a, a construction guy. Mm-hmm. So they got to talking. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be building these ice cream stores, and they connected and they um, got a contract to build all the ice cream stores in the Midwest. It was a multi million dollar referral. Wow. Just, they just happened to be sitting next to each other. Uh, another one, we had a group, um, uh, the painter was missing two or three weeks and people were worried about him because, you know, we're in a networking group where you build strong relationships and he found out he was going through some tough times on the business uh, way and his car was broken down and he was kind of struggling to get jobs and the, the chapter rallied around him. Uh, someone fixed his car for him. And oh, wow. And we all made a really concerted effort to uh, load his calendar with painting jobs for the next three months. So we helped him get back on his feet, and we got him uh, work for the next three months with some painting jobs. So. That's pretty awesome. You know, and that and what that does is that alludes to the fact of that it's not always necessarily about business. You know, sometimes it's about helping your fellow bus- your networker right. that you're with, especially in the BNI world. You draw really close relationships with the people that are in your group. I mean, to look at our group in Oconomowoc. I mean, sure. we've, ours is a pretty long standing group. I mean, it's been there for well over 25 years. Right. Um, I know my wife's been in it for 17, 18 years. Um, some of the other members, some of the one, ones that retire even come back and substitute. We saw that today <laughs> right. where Glenn comes back and Glenn was one of the founding members, but it's, it, it, and we have a situation now where another one of our members got seriously injured and you know, there's, we're having to, we're just helping out. We're, we're you know, we're going to take care of her for that. She's doing fine, but right. there's things you kind of have to do. Oh, for sure. um, so that's, that's not necessarily always about the business. It's always about the community too. And the ones and you building those relationships um, is, is key. I can, I can tell you one of my, biggest success stories um that i remember seeing it wasn't even with it wasn't even within our chapter um it was i, th- I thought about it where i was trying to think where i heard about it it might have been at it when kathy was a director um that they had had somebody who got a third tier referral so they referred somebody and then that person referred somebody else to them um but then i, I believe it was a very similar to that but it was a, a mortgage broker but he was very active 
Um, and he got connected with a builder and then he got connected with all these different people and they got this power group going. Sure. And he took his business from, I think it was like $200,000 a year, $300,000 a year to over a million and a half in 18 months. Wow. Just through the network and the power of referrals. Sure. And we talk about power circles. You know, there's, those are natural referral circles. Like in our group, if you get a chiropractor, a massage therapist, a physical therapist, a nutritionist, that's a power you guys can you can create massive amounts of referrals. So that's one of the things when I talk about networking, especially with somebody who's a startup business, right? Is generate the relationships because number one, they don't know who you are. You know, nobody, if you've got a brand new business, you got a lot of money, you got a, you have a finite amount of money you have to use to market your business and grow it, but you can't put it all into advertising because you might be going up against somebody who is got a lot deeper pockets than you do, and you're not gonna get to get that market share. But if you build relationships with people when you're growing, it's going to help you with your business and really help you grow. It's going to be a little bit of a slower start, but if you get those those groups and those those relationships going through networking, you're going to get your name out a lot faster. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and I've seen that for sure. So, what is one of the biggest lessons that you've learned since you've started to become a BNI director? What's one of the, what are the biggest takeaways you got from that? Um, being as visible as you can and being consistent with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so whether it be a BNI chapter, whether it be a chamber of commerce, um, some trade associations have a lot of different networking opportunities as well. Mm-hmm. If you're consistently going to whatever, whether it be a, again a chapter meeting or a chamber meeting or trade association, uh, could be some type of club or something like that, a church group. Um, the more that you are visible by attending, by doing follow-ups, by doing one-to-ones after the networking meeting, uh, that w- people get to know you, and that gives you credibility, and then that leads to profitability. So BNI has something called the VCP process. Mm-hmm. V is visibility, meaning people see you, they know that you're trustworthy, right. they know what you're do. Credibility is when people start talking, they know that you do a good job, uh, so they can trust to refer to you, and then that leads to profitability. So whether you're in a BNI chapter or a chamber of commerce meeting, the more you're consistent with meeting people and building relationships and following up with people, maybe liking their social media posts, getting active with people on that uh, avenue as well, um, that that's really goes a long way to building your business. You know, and you mentioned something about social media that that there's a, there's a networking opportunity out there as well. If you really, if you really, LinkedIn too, LinkedIn, Facebook, they have a lot of different categories that are industry specific and area specific. Sure. You know, or they might be just general, like I think they have one here in uh, Oconomowoc that's Lake Country for business, you know, and so businesses go in there and it, it's a, it's a nice way to get yourself out there in the social media world. Um, but so I, I know that there's a, there's a lot to be said about that. That could be a whole different episode in and of itself. But I think one of the biggest lessons that I've learned since I started, when I used to do my six, we have a 60 seconds where we can talk about our business and the kind of referral we're looking for. I used to be so general. Like it was the broad brush, you know, approach of saying, hey, I'll take anything. Right. There's there's benefits to being specific about what kind of referral that you're looking for. So, you know, I'll say I'm looking for a small business with less than 10 employees that has one owner. And, you know, and when you start painting that picture for people, it may not be immediate. But what you'll find, what I found over the years, when and I have the same one I do at BNI or at a chamber, or at a, at a local trade, whatever that case might be, I'll say this is what the type of business that we're looking, kind of like your elevator pitch. Sure. But I become even more specific to it where I'll say I'm looking for, right now we're looking for uh, Christian organizations which which are either church-related or um, the, you know service-related where we want to really try to help the, the religious side of things or small businesses for 10 employees and under one owner. And I've noticed that with the referrals that I'm getting from people when I have that specif- specificity, I mean, I made it say that right. But when, I, when I'm being so specific, is that the, the 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 interactions with the client right away or the potential client right away are much more easy, right? And the close rate of signing up the business, I would say, is well over seventy percent. Sure. Regardless of where it's coming from, whether it's at a chamber event or whether it's at um, whatever event it is, so being specific about your ask. I guess is what we talked about, and BNI teaches you that right. um, that you should do that in, um, in the art of the sixty second. Um, but it's it's crucial that you be specific about it because right. otherwise, then people would say, oh, I, "I knew this marketing guy." Yeah, 
you know, they're not going to, everybody knows a marketing guy. Right. But if you know a marketing guy that works in small business with this and this, they, they remember that a lot more. Right. Yeah. Specific is terrific is what they teach everybody in BNI. So if you, if you can narrow it down to like, if you're looking for a specific business owner, if you know the person's name, even getting as narrow as that really helps out very, very much. Um, and you can really narrow down whatever your target market is. So you're asking for whatever your ideal client is, uh, whether it be a geography, a size business, a consumer, uh, a consumer situation, someone's getting a divorce, someone's moving, whatever. Um, you can really narrow down whatever your target market is when you're specific. Yeah. What, and I was going to ask you about, you know, you talk about being specific or being consistent in it. Many business owners don't view networking as valuable. They view it as a waste of time. So when somebody says that, well, I don't have the time for it, what is your response to a business owner that, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot with this, but what, <laughs> but what is your response to a business owner that says, well, I don't have time for networking? Well, you, you, really, it's a very uh, cost-efficient way of marketing your business. Really, the cost would, be, would more be time, um, but I, the, the amount of business that it can be generated from referral marketing from an ROI perspective is, is huge. Um, again, being consistent, and you could always send someone else from your business to represent you, whether it be again a cha chamber meeting or a BNI meeting or whatever. But uh, it's something that really should be in your toolbox. Certainly, do your, your your mailers or your social media marketing, but referral marketing has to be a, a tool in your toolbox. Yeah, I my response is that's exactly what I talk about it as well. I mean, you look at you think about a wheel, and it's got the spokes of the wheel. Networking is is a is a viable part of that. I mean, you have to have it in your in your marketing toolbox because if you don't, if you think about if you don't, if it's a spoke of a wheel and you take three spokes out and one of those is networking, that wheel, that, that rim is not is, is not sustainable. You have to hit, be hit on those. I say just carve out that time. Right. I mean, you schedule all your other time, and I, I will always ask another owner, do you schedule out any time for yourself, like to go golfing or to go hunting or to your, do whatever the case may be? Well, yeah, I do it all the time. This is no different. It's an investment in your business that you need to be doing because if it's an hour, hour and a half, that ROI, if you really track it, which business owners, we talked about it coming down the stairs. A lot of people right. don't track every single thing on their business. If you tracked it, your ROI and networking is probably going to be one of your most profitable things that you can do for your business. Like you just talked about. Right. It's just huge. So the, that's, the that's an awesome rate point. on referrals is unbelievable. I mean, I know on, for any referrals that we get through our BNI, we're over 80% close rate. Easy. I mean, well, easy. I mean, because that is such a warm handoff because it's the person who's giving you the referral has already vetted you to them. Right. And I just got one yesterday from um, uh, from uh, one of the members of our chapter, and she's like, oh, yeah, we'll just we'll, we'll meet together. We'll get all the hammered out. And we'll, it's a 100% close rate on that deal. I mean, and so if you don't, I mean, it's not all we do in Generate Business, but there are some people that all they do is all they generate for their business is from BNI. Right. Which is a crazy thing because then you think about how the maximum amount of the potential for the ROI there is just insane. Right. So it, that's not the typical, sure. um, but it certainly can be. It certainly does add to the profitability. So that's awesome. I want to tell you about something else, a little bit of a success story. Um, we had, during COVID, um, BNI has its app, you know, and they have, you know, people from all over the world. Um, but I know that there were people from that were networking with us from all over the world saying, hey, we're having a really hard time right now with generating referrals because our people can't be out is – what are you guys doing? I mean, they reached out. And I look at this, not we didn't generate a lot of business, any business from it. Mm -hmm. But the community in and of itself, we helped other people by saying, here's some of the things we were doing. Here's some of the things we were doing. We did have a, um, a group of uh, people reach out from uh, a group from India. Um, they said, look, we've had a really hard time generating revenues. Or if business, we don't want to shut the business down. If there's anything you can, you've got that you can shift our way, we'd be glad to help. Um, and we, uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to do that, but they did survive sure. because there were other people within the BNI family in the world that were able to send the business. Right. And I thought that that's just, that just speaks to the power of networking. Even if it was virtual, right? it spoke to the power of the networking that kept this business alive in India and they had a hard hit. Um, so it was just, they were they're really super nice people. They're part of your BNI family. So they were taken care of from other people. Right. It was pretty awesome. So okay, well, thanks for that's gonna, we're talking about the networking, but now I'm going to put you on the spot with two truths and a lie. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So now this is a game we're going to call two truths and a lie. I'm going to read a set of three facts, and you have to determine which one is a lie. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about first one's going to be general networking. Which of these three facts about networking is a lie? 
one in four people don't network. LinkedIn reported over 800 million members in January of 2024. According to a tech report survey, 95% of those surveyed believe that face-to-face -face meetings provide much better opportunities to build lasting business relationships. One in four people don't network. LinkedIn reported 800 million members in January of 24, and 95% of those surveyed believe face-to-face -face meetings provide better opportunities. I would say uh, LinkedIn is the lie. Correct. Perfect. Nice All one. Right. Good one. All right. Here's a question about BNI. So you get this one right. Which of these three facts about BNI is a lie? BNI is the world's leading business referral organization with over 500,000 global members. The mission of BNI is to help BNI members increase their business through a structured, positive professional referral marketing program that helps them develop long term, meaningful relationships with quality business professionals. I'm not reading that again. And then BNI's core value, including honoring traditions and innovation, lifelong learning, positive attitude that, that givers gain, building relationships and accountability. I think the first one is a lie. That is a lie. So no, but the thing about it is, is that networking is a huge part of business. And you've grew your business through networking. I've grown my business through networking. Other businesses need to grow their business through networking and they need to carve out time. That's right. really the bottom line and to stay consistent at it and to build those longstanding relationships. Right. You got to be consistent. You got to follow up, build relationships. Don't go for the, your, your goal is not to go for the sales, to build relationships. It's not an immediate thing. It's a longstanding thing. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today, Dennis. Thanks, Dale. Um, and we really appreciate you joining in today to listen to this. Make sure you like us and follow us and rate us on the Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Networking is important. Make sure you, make sure you do it. But thanks again. I'm Skip from the Main Street Marketing Podcast, wishing you many, many successes. Hey, thanks for watching the latest episode of the Main Street Marketing Podcast. We really hope you got some great information. If you know somebody else who can use it, share it and like it because we want to help as many business owners as we can. And also, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so as we release more episodes, we can give you even more content to help you and your business. Thanks.